In this video, we're going to be covering, without a question of a doubt, my all-time favorite professional wrestler, and not only that, but person in the world, uh, Bruno San Martino. As a kid, you're going to have several wrestlers who you love or who's your favorite at the time, or um, and as you grow, you'll see different wrestlers in time, and you'll have different favorites, but one thing was always consistent, and Bruno San Martino was undoubtedly... Uh, my very favorite wrestler uh, of all time. We're going to go through some of the uh, memorabilia that I collected uh, from Bruno over the years, <clears throat> from up until when uh, he retires the first time, and uh, and from the very beginning, from when he started in 1959, December. Um, let's see. Uh, we're going to cover some Japanese uh, issues, and I'm going to cover a, a topic about his, his belts that he had. He held eight different versions slash styles of the WWF belt. And some people don't know that. They think there's um, two versions that he held, but he held eight. Um, and I'll point out all eight to you. If it's not on a magazine cover, it'll be on an eight by 10, because uh, he just wasn't featured on a cover with that particular belt, because he only held some belts just a couple of weeks and some for a couple of years. And I'll explain as we go through what happened to all those belts. This uh, Wrestling Life magazine, I, I honestly hate calling it a magazine because it's, it's really not a magazine. It's more like a pamphlet. I mean, it's it's smaller than a comic book. It's super thin. There's only a handful of pages. Um, it was around for, you know, a couple of years in the 50s and 60s. Not a fan of it. I You know, a magazine to me is something for mass consumption that's on the stands every month. It, it's, you know, sold all over the country. And it's a big sized full magazine like that. These were more like a like a church pamphlet. I mean, it's uh, very thin, not much substance to it, not much material into it. But nonetheless, you know, it is a magazine. I just myself personally don't consider them a magazine. Um, but this is his first cover. It's March 1960 of Wrestling Life. And uh, it is, uh, it talks, it goes into, uh, what were they saying? He was on, a, he did some kind of a, a TV show where he did some feats of strength and he, they were calling him uh, the Italian Superman. And uh, that article is in this magazine here. His first one, uh, Wrestling Life, March of 1960. This is a, a very old program. Uh, I guess I got to check the date. Kingston, New York, October 22nd, 1960. So this is his rookie year. Uh, that's his rookie photo down here for uh, photo, sh uh, photo shots, for photos, um, and uh, extremely hard to find uh, programs that survived, especially this thin on a smaller show that was most likely in a, in a small high school gym someplace uh, up in upstate New York, um, but very old and during his rookie season. Uh, rookie year, I should say. Okay, so there, here's a program of Bruno. We're going to go through the different belts from this point on. So this is his first style belt, and it was the Buddy Rogers United States NWA belt. That was a the belt they first used in the WWF. Um, so he was he held this belt for that night that he won it, a few photo ops afterwards, and he handed that belt uh, back in while his belt was being made. Uh, here is a color shot of that belt. Try to get it a little bit better shot of it. Um, this is also signed by, by Bruno. I have more autographs by Bruno than any other wrestler. Maybe Harley Race would come in close second, but a lot of these things here you're going to see are going to be signed. Uh, this is a cover of Wrestling World, and you'll see Bruno's belt again. This is number two, and it's got an Indian head on the plate. Very thin, small uh, leather, more like a weightlifting belt type of leather. This was the interim belt that he held for a very short time also, while the other belt, like I guess it was being made. <clears throat> this is a uh, newspaper article from the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette, um, September 13th, 1963, and it has the boxing champ and Bruno. Uh, a pair of champions show off their belts is what the title is, and they're both from the Pittsburgh area, so they've all been uh, very proud of Pittsburgh. I'm sorry, of Pittsburgh. Bruno in the Pittsburgh area, and he was always in their papers. He was he did a lot for the community in the city of Pittsburgh, and uh, that's just his first shot with that same belt. This is uh, version <clears throat> number three, and we're gonna call it the uh, like the dangling jewel because the jewel is dangling down this way. These are just my terminology for it, so I know how to describe it. So if you hear these terms, it's just the way I describe it, so I know for myself. Um, 
This is the cover of uh, 1966 Wrestling Review. It's also signed by Bruno again. <clears throat> this would be the belt that got stolen. Uh, there was, there's been several belts in the WWF that were stolen. Uh, some were hocked. Um, I'll explain. Some people think it's the Buddy Rogers belt that he had first that was stolen. Yes, that was stolen from Buddy Rogers' house at a house party that he had and disappeared. That's not the belt that was stolen from Bruno. This is the belt that was stolen from Bruno in 1965. And here is a program, uh, October 4th, 1965. And on the back of it, it says... $10,000 reward, no questions asked, for the return of the diamond-studded gold belt symbolic to the World Wrestling Heavyweight Champion of the World Wrestling Federation, Willie Gilsenberg, president. This belt is more than 50 years old and has been worn by Frank Gotch, uh, George Hackenschmidt, uh, that goes on Strangler Lewis, blah, 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 um, and uh, is recognized down to the present champion of Bruno San Martino. This belt cannot be duplicated. So and on this program... They are giving an, a, uh, a reward to get the title belt back. The story behind this is, and it comes from Bruno's mouth himself, um, this was, let me see, I have it written down on the side here. I'll just put this picture back up so you can see it. This belt here, September 27th, 1965, Madison Square Garden, Bruno San Martino versus Tarzan Tyler. Uh, after the match, Bruno went to the Spindle Top restaurant in Times Square, and yeah, Times Square was a shithole in the 60s also. Uh, went to the restaurant in Times Square. The belt was left in the back seat of Arnold Skolan's car. Arnold Skolan's back window was broken, and the belt and the briefcase was stolen from the back seat. And that's from directly from Bruno's mouth on how the belt got stolen and what belt it was that was stolen and never recovered. So there it is. So that's version number three of the belt. <clears throat> Here is an extremely rare shot of version four. Um, now, pay close attention. It might be hard to see in the video because uh, some of the pictures are small. Uh, it's, there's slight changes, not dramatic changes, but slightly. Okay, so we have the third one as the dangling jewel. Here's the fourth one. It's on the cover of a Japanese wrestling magazine in 1967. Um, and notice that the chains on the side. Okay, so there's a chains that are attached to the side plate uh, that dangled uh, to the center plate. And it was flimsy and cheap and didn't hold up very well. Bruno said he hated it and they changed it out once again. So this will be version uh, number five. I think we're on. That was three, four. Yeah, five. Version five looks a lot like the, the, the uh, other version, but the, the center plate's the same. But the side plate here is more of an hourglass and flat on the top, if you can notice that almost subtle change there. Uh, the leather would change also on this one. This was uh, black leather and uh, had the hourglass. The next version, a little bit hard to tell, the, the front plate, uh, this is also a black leather and it had the dangle, it had small chains attached to the side with the, uh, uh, the more rounded plate. Not necessarily rounded, but not square either. Rounded edges, I guess, but it's not the hourglass as before. Uh, here is a front view of that same belt. So I always love this early picture of Bruno signed in, in 66. I uh, always thought it was a great shot, but you can see the belt there, uh, front view of it. <clears throat> um, okay, so. I believe that was uh, sick. That was the sixth version. The seventh version is a program from uh, Madison Square Garden. I always found this interesting. Bruno said he never defended the title against Don Leo Jonathan. Uh, here is a program from Madison Square Garden on um, January 14th, 1974, and he defended it against Don Leo Jonathan. Um, I guess maybe he just forgot, or that's even on an interview, on a shoot interview, that he said he didn't defend the title against Don Leo, which is, is false. Um, now, now you'll see the, the belt change. This is the one that Ivan Koloff had won, and it has more like the sheriff's badge type of star on the side, and uh, the front name plate is uh, is pretty much the same, but the, the back of the belt is now blue, and it's got some felt on it, and it wasn't the, the leather. So this was version number seven. <clears throat> 
And of course the popular one was version number eight. And that's just the red leather with the winged eagle. And uh, Bruno would be the second person to hold this. This was, um, this was given to Stan Stasiak the night that he lost the title. This was to be Bruno's uh, uh, comeback match when he won. And it was very similar to Pedro Morales's uh, red leather belt, but his wings eagle was way smaller. So Pedro didn't hold this belt. Uh, people think he did. It looks very close, but it's not. So Pedro's was his winged eagle had very short wings. Uh, Stasiak was the first to hold this red, and Bruno and Superstar were the only three to have that version of the belt. Speaking of uh, Pedro. Here is a magazine of Wrestling Monthly when Pedro uh, won the WWWF belt. This is signed uh, by Pedro. Really hard to get a magazine signed by Pedro with a belt on the cover. It was very, very hard to find this. Um, I've had it in my collection for a number of years. Uh, the reason I bring it out because it's setting up the match between Pedro and Bruno to sell out the first Shea Stadium show. And it says Pedro in Bruno's Land. <clears throat> Always thought that was a great looking magazine. And... Uh, that would set up the match at Shea Stadium, match of the century, Pedro versus Bruno. And this is uh, also signed by Bruno at the bottom. Good looking magazine. Some people think it's the greatest looking one of all time. I kind of disagree myself. Uh, here is a program uh, of that event. And uh, these things are ridiculously hard to find. Um, especially that night, it was cold, damp, rainy, and for these to have held up in this kind of condition, it was uh, difficult to find them in good shape, and I was lucky enough to, to be able to grab one. It was just an 8 by 10 of the two uh, before the match, and this is also signed by, by both men, Pedro with the, with the belt. Here is, I always forget what newspaper this was, the Daily News, a, a Daily News clipping uh, talking about the match afterwards and about the fans and the, the crowd. <clears throat> so uh, now Bruno, yes, okay, so that was all the belts that he had. Um, I didn't pre-plan uh, any of this. This was just in a stack and I grabbed it, so forgive me if, I'm, if it catches me by surprise a little bit too. So Br Bruno held the eight versions of the, of the belt. He lost the belt to Pedro. Uh, he's got an easier schedule. Now he's no longer the world champion. He decides to travel the country and the world for that matter and start wrestling in other companies. And uh, here is a program, uh, Stranglehold, from the WWA, uh, Dick the Bruiser's uh, company. And Bruno would team up uh, with Dick the Bruiser uh, and they would wrestle as a tag team. And they would win the WWA World Tag Team Championship. And here is a rare shot autographed by Bruno, uh, him and Dick the Bruiser on the cover with the belts, not the cover, the on the photo. This is uh, PSA DNA certified, um, real rare shot uh, of Bruno with that belt. Um, I just one of my best pieces that I have. Um, actually, yeah, Bruno, this is kind of big. Bruno um, would go out to Los Angeles uh, to the Olympic Auditorium, and out there they would have their huge... A uh, yearly battle royal, 22-man um, battle royal, $11,000 uh, to the winner. This is a program to that event. And Bruno was on the cover, May of 1972, winning that tournament. Uh, there was a, a ton of big names in there. Mil Maskers was in that. Um, uh, I'm trying to see the date. May of 1972 of the wrestler. Bruno out in the Olympic. Here is a... Signed, uh, Inside Wrestling, uh, when Bruno wrestled for the NWA World Championship against Harley Race. Bruno was not the champion, obviously, at the time. He wrestled for the NWA and uh, did not come out the champion, of course. Jack Briscoe would take the title shortly after this match. This is a match that's extremely glossed over, hardly ever talked about. Most people don't even know about it. And here it is, bright and in color on the front cover of a magazine, and people still gloss over it. Um, would have loved to have seen footage of the match. Sadly, to my knowledge, there's no footage of it, but this is also signed by Harley and Bruno. <clears throat> Two of my favorites, of course, like I mentioned before. Okay, after traveling the country and uh, all through Japan, I'll get into some Japan stuff later on. Bruno comes back and he would take back the WWF title. This magazine is an Inside Wrestling, uh, May of 74. This is a shot of Bruno. He still has the graffiti, uh, uh, 
graffiti on him uh, from the uh, confetti, I should say, from the celebration of winning the title back, beating Stan Stasiak. And this is a locker room shot of him po first posing with the belt. This is also signed by Bobby Heenan, uh, Jimmy Valiant, and Terry Funk. <clears throat> And it's another shot of Bruno in the back locker room after he first won the title back for the second time on the cover of Ben Strong. These were nice. There were some commemorative magazines they put out with just strictly about Bruno only. Uh, it, it's a, it spans his career in wrestling uh, all the way up until he won the title back for the second time. These have become pretty collectible over the years. Uh, this is autographed. It was so popular, they put out a second print. Uh, this was first put out in 1974, spring of 1974. And it also was republished again in, it just says 1976. Uh, 76, I don't know the date. It came back out again because it, like it was a very popular seller and they decided to make another run and this second one is also signed by bruno just a different cover but it's all the same material it's all the same uh, uh wording it's just reprinted the magazine's entirely the same <clears throat> this is a uh getting hard to find i guess it always was kind of hard to find it's just a, a magazine titled bruno it doesn't have the word wrestling on it it's about bruno's life it's about his battles uh, in Italy when he was a sick kid uh, fighting the Nazis and hiding from the Nazis during World War II and his uh, arrival to America, uh, him going through all the challenges through his teen years and uh, how he developed into becoming the world's biggest wrestler. Uh, it's, it's a really uh, excellent magazine, excellent material that hasn't been printed anywhere else. And any Bruno fans that are seriously a Bruno fan, uh, this is a great piece to have. <clears throat> This is a uh, just a nice shot of Bruno on the cover of the 75 issue of The Wrestler that I had gotten signed by Bruno. Uh, just a plain, simple cover I always thought was pretty cool. Uh, we got a uh, championship wrestling yearbook from Madison Square Garden. Um, to my knowledge, they didn't do this very often. I, I only know of one, and it's this one. Um, they would put out a yearbook and... Uh, all of the different events uh, from 1976 uh, and 75. And uh, in the back, it's just got a, a photo of uh, Ivan and, and Bruno wrestling together. The front cover is also signed uh, by Bruno and Ivan. I don't know of any other ones out there. I, I believe it's the only yearbook Madison Square Garden put out. <clears throat> One of my favorite uh, feuds, I still remember my father's and my uncle's talking around the, di the dinner table about superstar and graham and the matches back in the 70s it just brings back memories every time i see these and uh and how great times were and and what a great feud this was and how surprising it was that bruno had lost a belt and this was just a cool cover of the two battling it out signed by both superstar <clears throat> and bruno and uh this cover of the wrestlers of the same match bruno signed it and also superstar this is a uh, Madison Square Garden program to that match. We just seen the covers on, and that was January 12th, 1976. Bruno San Martino wrestling superstar for the title. And uh, that's the program. I have uh, hundreds of programs that I could make videos of and show you guys all from the garden. <clears throat> uh, this is a uh, wrestling annual. It's signed by Terry Funk when he was the NWA world champ and uh, Bruno when uh, he was the champ. I've always liked this picture and this photo. Again, it's just a nostalgic piece to me as being a kid. From being a kid, um, this would be la Bruno's last cover as the uh, champion. His last belt cover, as you can see, he has the belt hanging down low, and it's also signed by Bruno. It's, this one always depressed me for some reason, it's just because you know I know what's coming next, and he lost the belt, and times have changed. Uh, he would face the superstar once again. And this wrestler is signed by both Superstar and Bruno. <clears throat> and Bruno would lose the title. Superstar Billy Graham uh, wins the WWF title from Bruno. My heater just kicked on. Hope it doesn't affect the video. Uh, this actually doesn't belong in here. Great cover, though. I always loved this cover as a kid. Um, but it's in the wrong pile. Here's a rare shot of Bruno. When he lost the WWF title, he had... Uh, Went to Puerto Rico and became the WWC uh, North American champion. And here he is. This is a cutout from a Mexican Lucha magazine uh, that I kept. A rare shot of Bruno with him with that title. 
a lot of fans demanded Bruno and the Mill to have a, a match at the time. Mill was the IWA champion. Bruno, of course, the WWF champion. And uh, I always loved this cover. I thought it was a fantastic look to it. Mill's cut. It looks like they're together. It's really close, but they're not, obviously. It's a separate photo. Um, but uh, always thought this was a great shot. It would have been a great match. Actually, it probably would have been a really boring match, if you think about it. Um, even the Japanese got in, into this uh, hype of these two facing off. And then the Japanese issue, it says WWA versus WWF. Uh, could the match possibly happen? And of course, no, we never got that match. <clears throat> Here is Bruno's uh, first Japanese cover on the cover of Gong, November 1971. Great shot of Bruno. I've always loved this cover. <clears throat> Here we got a shot. Uh, Bruno and Inoki with a rare matchup. <clears throat> I'm not sure if this is the match, quite possibly because they never wrestled after what I'm about to tell you. Uh, Bruno did not like Inoki whatsoever. Uh, he had more of a bonding with Baba. And the reason being that Inoki tried to shoot on Bruno when he came and put him in a hold. Bruno said that he uh, easily muscled out of the hold. Uh, Gave Anoki a couple of shots, and he quickly scurried to the corner to tag out. Bruno was in a tag match. It was it was Bruno and Carl Gotch uh, versus Anoki and Baba. Um, the, the rumor had it that Gotch told Anoki to shoot on Bruno. Um, Bruno says he doesn't know anything about that, and certainly would hope that wouldn't be true. Of course, Gotch was uh, was a trainer uh, of Anoki for a long time, uh, but. Since then, uh, this is 1971, December, right? So a, a couple of short months later, Baba and Anoki would separate and all Japan and New Japan would form. So Bruno never went to New Japan and the rest of his tours in Japan were with Baba and all Japan from that point. <clears throat> and speaking of Baba, here he is on the cover uh, with Bruno in 1972. So this was taken in 1971 sometime because this was January's issue of 72 so I'll put this around maybe November uh, of 71 and here's another shot later on a different match with Bruno and Baba uh, this is the uh, wrestling monthly issue uh, November 1972 this is the Japanese coverage of the Bruno Pedro match any fans of that match I highly, highly suggest you buy or try to find this issue. This is Gong, November 1972, and it has all the coverage of the Bruno versus Pedro match in full color. There are some fantastic shots in here for anyone who's a fan of that match. I mean, let me see if I can open it real quick and just to show a couple of photos. <clears throat> Watch, I probably won't be able to find anything, but um, just a close-up shot here it's a great shot now keep in mind this is 1971 nothing was in color if it was it was a photo or two we did not get all these great photos look at them shots are fantastic Bruno holding up the American flag I'm sorry Pedro holding up the American flag um, just absolutely this is a shot with of Neil Mascaris and uh, Ernie Ladd I mean, just Sports Illustrated quality when it came to these magazines. Like I said, full cover, early 70s. It's just blows our magazines away from those cheap newspaper type print that we had on our magazines. Okay, here's just a shot of Bruno on the cover of, uh, of Gong in 1974 when he won the title back from Stasiak. And uh, this covers Pedro's loss to Stasiak, Stasiak's loss to Pedro, and... I'm sorry, Stasiak's lost to Bruno, and uh, it also covers uh, uh, matches from, from all three, and it, it, there's some great color shots in here as well, if you like the, uh, if you're a fan of that match, of when he won the title back, there's a lot of great color shots there. And this is also when Bruno won the title back, it's just showing Pedro and Bruno on the cover together. I'm not really a fan of the background, I wish they would have had it like in a hallway or in the ring or wherever they were at at the time, I always liked that better. But um, there's also some, some great shots in here uh, from Stasiak match. <clears throat> Here's a belt that Bruno would have had, it would have been the ninth version, uh, but he didn't. He was set 
very close to having a match uh, with Lou Thez. The rumor goes around, different people say different things. Thez said he wanted a lot of money and they wouldn't cover it. Bruno said that's not true. I tend to believe Bruno because the guy has never been known to be a liar. Uh, the truth be told, they wanted Bruno to work uh, seven days a week. And he says, I'm not working seven days a week. I went off on Sundays. I have a newborn. My parents are getting old. I want to be able to see my family at least one day a week. The NWA on Sundays was a big day for the NWA territories and uh, needed them for Sundays. And uh, they didn't come to the agreement. And Bruno says, I'm not going to do it. And it never happened. And honestly, I'm kind of glad it didn't happen because now we have two different companies. And, you know, competition is always a good thing. I'd rather have the NWA and WWF separate. Who knows what would have happened if they combined and you know, if they would have went a different direction. Uh, we can only just guess. But I'm glad it stayed the way it did. <clears throat> This is uh, Bruno signed on the cover of the Tri-State Wrestling Magazine. These are extremely hard to find, the Tri-State Wrestling Magazines. Um, these are also thick, heavy, glossy paper. Um, not a lot of color, some color inside, more so than the average, but nowhere near our Japanese friends. Uh, Tri-State put out a few, and they're very difficult to find. And Bruno is on the cover of mostly all of them. Uh, this is the second one. Actually, this one came out in 64. This one is in 66, and it's Bruno with the different belt this time. You can see the side plates with the uh, piece of um, chain. And this is the third one, and this was in 1967, and this one is also signed. So I got two out of the three tri-states signed by Bruno. Not too bad. <clears throat> Uh, just a fantasy match piece talking about Bruno possibly facing Gene Kaniski for the title versus title, which never happened. But uh, nonetheless, an old 60s magazine. Wrestling Confidential is Frank Sinatra, Bruno's manager. So, I mean, this is how popular Bruno was. They're putting him in the same sentence on the cover of a magazine uh, with Frank Sinatra. It's just kind of funny. And this is also, I got signed by Bruno. This is a, um, <clears throat> this is a shot of 1970 uh, Bruno. This is your life. And this is, I can't remember... One, they ran a fake story on Bruno, and he was extremely pissed off at editor Stanley Weston for running it. Um, so much so that he wouldn't even speak to Stanley or the magazines anymore. This is all in Bill Apter's book. Uh, Bill had approached Bruno and found out why he was mad, and he said, and Bill said to Bruno, "Please let me um, run a real story on you and your life, and uh, and and." it's going to be you know a, a big spread and we'll do it right and i promise you it'll be you know handled correctly and bill did it and that re-established uh, their friendship again with the magazines and i think it's in this one this is either the hit piece or it's the corrections i'm looking at the date and bill after got there um mid 70 so i don't know if he was doing anything like this yet i know 71 and up is when after started hitting the magazines but 70 Early 71 and down, Bill wasn't with them yet. Or when he was, he didn't have anything published yet. <clears throat> but that could be the one. Uh, I'll find that out. and Maybe I'll put it in the uh, description So, in case anybody wants it. Um, this is Bruno versus uh, uh, Bruiser Brody. This is a rare program from 1976. If anyone wanted some Bruiser Brody fans out there like myself, I have a ton of Bruiser Brody stuff that I could show. Uh, this is his uh, one of his first his first match against Bruno at the Garden. I think they ran a couple there. Uh, this is also a Madison Square Garden program um, put up by Dave Davis. It's a uh, these are independent guys and they put out fantastic programs. These were better than the actual Garden ones because they were just a fold out piece of paper and these are actually pages and photos and articles in these. So I've always loved these. These are super rare, hard to get. But it's uh, Bruiser Brody and uh, and Bruno at the Garden. <clears throat> Here is the uh, second Shea Stadium match, uh, uh, event rather, uh, June 24th. It had the closed circuit TV with Ali and, uh, and Inoki. And it was the uh, revenge match with Bruno versus Stan Hansen from when he broke his neck. And Bruno coming back way too soon with the neck still being broken and still pulled it off. And this is a... Uh, cage match program i have some great four by six photos of this that i got from the uh, one of the photographers at ringside um of stan versus bruno and this is the program to that match 
uh, August 7th, uh, 1976. <clears throat> Here's just a rare shot of Superstar Graham when he was well over 300 pounds competing for the World's Strongest Man competition. Um, he doesn't look that bad in this picture, but man, he was fat. Fat, thick, bulky, girth, really. Um, <clears throat> not fat out of shape from drinking too much. He was using that weight uh, for the competition. Years ago, that competition from 1980 was on YouTube. I don't know if it still is anymore, but if, you can, if you're a superstar fan, you want to check out the size of him. He was enormous, but he had the shaved head. He still has the tie-dye. He's got the, uh, the black beard, and this match took place down in Dallas, uh, Houston area, I guess it was. Um, rare shot of, of Bruno on his way out and the rebirth of uh, Superstar when people said he was actually dead. <laughs> But two more, two more years later before Bruno, uh, Superstar would come back out uh, of resurrection, I guess. Uh, this is the third and final Shea Stadium spectacular show. And uh, it's got Bruno versus Larry Zabisco. This was another huge... I mean, Bruno still kept people and the fans hot. This was, a, this was one of the hottest feuds. He was doing much more business than Backlund. He was drawing more people than Backlund could draw. Backlund kind of always needed help on his shows to fill out arenas. If it wasn't Bruno doing something, it was uh, Dusty Rhodes coming in and things like that. And, but Bruno, again, with the drawing power, able to fill out, uh, fill up Shea Stadium three times. Uh, no other wrestler has done that at that era. No other champions done that. Backlund, Pedro, uh, none of them. It, it was all because of Bruno. Um, you know, he, he should get a lot of credit for that. And it's really glossed over. Uh, I mean, the guy, you know, did three stadium shows at that time period when there was, you know, sometimes twice a month at the Garden, every month guaranteed. Uh, it was there all the time, plus all the little club places uh, that they ran the shows. Um, you know, uh, just trying to think, uh, you know, this, I mean, there were shows every weekend, everywhere, constant. And this guy's still able to fill up a uh, baseball stadium three times. And sadly, to show uh, Bruno's farewell, uh, this was uh, his farewell match and uh, at the Brendan Byrne Arena. This was opening night of the Brendan Byrne, which was, you know, obviously the Meadowlands near Giant Stadium era, area. And uh, this was this was a pretty expensive piece, too, to find Bruno. I never had a chance to get it signed. I debated getting it signed. I was like, I don't know. I'm not sure. Uh, I actually ended up doing a, a 16 by 20 instead. My money was running short. And... Um, I actually have so many 8x10s and 16x20s of Bruno signed, it's, it's not even funny. Uh, I'll just show you two of them. Guys, this is the one that I chose to get signed uh, instead. And it cost me a lot because of the inscription. I'll just turn the camera around. Um, this is a 16x20 that hangs on my wall. I had that signed by uh, Superstar uh, WWF Champion 7778. I think it looks awesome. This is during their first match that we showed earlier and the bottom. Bruno San Martino, two-time WWF champion. I love that as well. It's just no reference to WWE, no reference to Hall of Fame. I always tell that when I see the wrestlers, do not mention the WWE or Hall of Fame, please, if you want to inscribe something. Uh, and this is another 16 by 20. And uh, Bruno San Martino, two-time WWF champ, the living legend. And it's the night he won the title back. Sorry about the glare. Nothing I can do about it, but it just getting you the idea that, you know, I must have nine more of these. So there it is, a little tri tribute and uh, farewell to my all-time favorite wrestler who still inspires me to stay in shape and hit the gym today, uh, Bruno San Martino. Thanks for watching.